the pleasure. popping bottles. <laughs> yes, and it doesn't mean you give up the pleasure seeking. It's just how can I still do that? And, and yeah, right? so it's not it's choose fun. one. It's you, you know you can continue to live the lifestyle that you have and the things that you know bring you joy in your journey. But just be mindful to to have an alternative or to save or yes. this and that. Yeah. Thank for that example. None that makes none sense. None of these is about giving up who mm. you are. It's understanding who you are using the strengths of who you are, and then understanding what... Hey, beloveds. Welcome back to the Living Consciously podcast with me, Yvette Rajakopa, author, life coach, leadership, and wellness educator. And here we talk everything healing, personal development, and growth. So today, again, I have Farana Goga. I hope I said that correctly. And she's taking us through money archetypes. She is going to unpack it. If you don't know what money archetypes are, I think listen to this and watch it till the end because it is really going to be something that's going to help you to improve your your relationship with money. Farhana, what are these money archetypes? Um, Welcome again, (laughs) first of all. (laughs) What are these money archetypes? And how do people find out what they are? And how? what are they? So money archetypes, the sacred money archetypes, was developed by a woman called Kendall Summerhawk. And she really wants to empower women around their money. And I love that. So there are eight archetypes. Understanding what our archetypes are. Archetypes are just codes, really. It's the the way we, it's universal ways that we operate. And there are eight money ones. Eight, okay. Eight. And what we need to do is to understand and know Um, our top three and that's going to give us what our struggles are so my money archetypes I'm going to jump in there and then I'm going to tell you the different ones Mm -hmm. my money archetypes is connector nurturer and romantic Mm -hmm. none of my money archetypes Mm -hmm. is linked to saving none of my money archetypes are linked to knowing how to keep money which means that my natural unconscious way around money is even though my family is great with money my natural archetype way with money is like you use it to connect to nurture and to luxury luxury oh wow okay there's no there's nothing in my top three archetypes so i have got to work really hard which is why my affirmation is it's safe for me to make and keep because none of those is about keeping money. Okay. So, all right. So there's eight of eight archetypes. There's eight archetypes. Yeah. And we need to know how they work together because you could have archetypes that are completely in, in conflict with each other, which means that your relationship with money is constantly in conflict. Okay. And if you can understand your archetypes and what the codes are, then you have your roadmap. Okay, so oh, give us give us the codes and give us the roadmap. I'm yeah, really curious to know what my archetypes are and how they're contributing to my behavior. Okay, so the first, I'm just giving it to you in alphabetical order. Okay. Okay, that's the order. Accumulator, which is the inner banker. So an accumulator is conscientious, trustworthy, and disciplined. You find it easy to save, but you may suffer from fear and guilt around investing. So you need to learn to say yes to opportunities because opportunities create wealth. Okay. So you need to learn to invest. Ah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Alchemist, which is your inner idealist, they're idealistic, they're transformative, they're creative. They're great at creating ideas. They're amazing. But they find themselves relying on other people for financial support. So they need to learn how to transform their ideas into financial success. So how do you take your ideas? There you are, jumping, generating ideas, and like just going, oh, money can. Just but you're like not turning them into. Just, but you're not turning them into your financial success. How do you turn? Love that? it. Celebrity is the inner big shop. These people were born to be the stars. They go out. They're magnetic. They're confident. They people are drawn to them. They're radiant. They radiate all of the stuff. They love to be seen. They always stand out in the crowd, but they struggle with compulsive spending. Mm. So they'll go out and they'll go, I just really want that because people will think that's beautiful and I'm just going to get that. So they have compulsive spending. So celebrities focused, outward focused and based on how people perceive you. Correct. Okay. They need to work on accumulating wealth 
whilst being admired and valued in the world. Because for the most part, they spend, spend, spend because they want to be admired by the world, but then they don't accumulate. What would you give as an affirmation to the celebrity one? So the celebrity one, it's safe for me to keep money and being seen. Hmm. Interesting how that would like actualize. Okay, I want to hear about the next one. Connector. Connector. I <laughs> confess, me. I think I used to be a connector from what you've said, okay? Yeah. Yep. So the inner relationship creator. You're trusting, innocent, and resilient. You're great at creating valuable relationships, but you may not feel empowered about money. And tackling your money feels overwhelming. Mm. So you need to get comfortable with your finances. So you empower yourself and others. I think I'm definitely a connector, I think. So you <laughs> usually so connectors, when you, you're younger, you kind of go like, no, 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 no. And then it gets to a point like, something is going on here. Mm. Something is going on here. And then you pause. And then you, you kind of go, I, think I need to look at this differently. My affirmation for, as a connector, if I'm a connector, is not everybody deserves my money. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Let's hear. How many do we have left? We have four left. We're four left. Right. Okay. So the maverick, which is the inner rebel, you're marching to the beat of a different drum. Mm. So you look a little bit different to other people. You, the, your interactions are a little bit different. You're clever and charismatic. You're great at taking a risk and paying attention to the metrics. So you're really good with the numbers. You're really great with the numbers. But you're prone to gambling with your financial security. So you can invest in something, lose it, and make a lot of money, lose it, okay? So you need to learn to balance the risk, balance risk-taking around your finances and create your financial security. Balance is good. That makes balance a lot of sense, good, yeah. Right? The nurturer, which is the inner sponsor. So you want to care for others, mm -hmm. right? So your archetype is all about giving devotion, reliability. You always give amazing value. You help all the people that you around you. You want to rescue everyone, and you do this through your money. And you need to learn to create clear money boundaries and that you can help someone and it doesn't have to be linked to your money. I love that so much because I know I also used to be a nurturer. And especially that's why probably I'm in the healing space because it is about like give, helping rather. Yeah. And I think that one of understanding that support is not always giving people money. Support is saying, just listening to them. Support doesn't yes. always mean that dig into your wallet because automatically we do that, but it doesn't actually help them. It's it actually, them. it doesn't empower them in the way that we think. It just makes us feel good. Like, I give you money, it makes me feel good because I love to nurture. But that's not what the person may need in order for them to, to, to actually be empowered in their journey. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just two more. Romantic, which is the inner pleasure seeker. So your sacred strengths as a romantic are luxury, abundance, seeking pleasure, right? All the beautiful good things. You truly believe that there will always be more money. Mm. And there is always more money. But you, you believe it to a point where you just, that's just what you do. Fly by the seat of your pants. So you might avoid anything and everything to do with money. You need to learn to create financial security while living your life to the full. Sure. Living the life to the full, fullest doesn't mean, you know, <laughs> popping, you know, you know, popping bottles, all those type of things that people have to say, money is energy, money is abundant. It always comes to me, but you're not thinking about tomorrow or you're not really being responsible in the way that you deal with money. And some people, because you have that abundant mindset, you might not have planned for a pandemic, for example, <laughs> and then Correct. you're stuck and you're unable to you're like, where did my money go? Exactly. <laughs> and then you have like images in your mind of you popping bottles. So <laughs> I'm just making it a funny example. But I think Absolutely. it's that just living Absolutely. for now because you have that abundant mindset and we never think of maybe it has to be in a responsible way to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you give up the pleasure. popping bottles. <laughs> yes. And it doesn't mean you give up the pleasure seeking. It's just how can I still do that? And, and yeah, right? so it's not it's choose fun. one. It's, you, you know, you can continue to live the lifestyle that you have and the things that, you know, bring you joy in your journey, but just be mindful to 
to have an alternative or to save or yes. this and that. Yeah. I think for that example, that, that makes sense. None of these is about giving up who mm. you are. It's understanding who you are, using the strengths of who you are, and then understanding what mm. are your pitfalls. Okay. And then mm. creating stuff around your pitfalls. Makes sense. The last, the last one? one is the ruler, which is your inner empire building. You're courageous and visionary and you're determined. You're great at building an empire. You want to build an empire. You can burn yourself out. Uh, as you're doing that, because you want people, sounds familiar. Because you want people to thrive, but you also struggle with feeling that there's n- never going to be enough money. Mm. So, what your lesson is is to achieve leadership and prosperity with grace and ease. To achieve leadership and prosperity with grace and ease. That's a beautiful one because so many of us grew up around the hustle culture. You have to show up on this top ten yes. millionaire, billionaire people in the world, but most people don't recognize the commitment and responsibility that comes with that in terms of self-care and yes. the life that you're basically giving up to some extent. I mean, you can have it all, but I think a lot of us aren't aware that there's a lot of burnout when you're trying to make it to the top 10 um, list of the billionaires in the world. There's a lot of responsibility. If you have to pay 200 people salaries or 500,000 people salaries, that is responsibility. And a lot of us aren't aware. I actually had to go through that process of realizing why am I committing to this hustle culture? Why do I want to make so much money? Why can't I just make enough? <laughs> and then I that, that means I will have peace for the rest of my life. Then that works for me. So I think I used to have um, the empire one, but it was because due to cultural and societal things because as an entrepreneur your goals are so big but I was like no this amount of money is enough for me this is enough to allow me to live a certain lifestyle to have the impact that I want to have and to have this amount the the peace that I want to have because we forget that how will we feel in that empire Will, yes. you, will it just be a big empire with a fence and a wall and you're in there alone and burnt out? Or will it be an empire where you're happy and you're, still, you've, you're living life to the fullest and you're not burnt out? Yeah. yeah. And all of these archetypes, you know, people go, how do they develop? So sometimes we're born with them and sometimes we develop because of what's happening around us. Yeah. You know, what we're seeing, some of them we're just born with. So when you're looking at the, the archetypes and there's a quiz, the way you answer it is up to you. So you can answer it, how have I been my whole life? Which is probably and like my inner, my inner calling. Or you can answer it as, this is how I am now. Mm. Either of those is true. But understanding our, in, our archetypes means that we understand our drivers, which means that we can then understand what our strengths are and what our pitfalls are. And then we can start changing our relationship with money into a much more empowered one. Thank you so much, Farah, and I really enjoyed this conversation. I think it's so straightforward. I think it's it it's such it's only eight of them, but yep. so many people I think are gonna hear themselves in those exo- those different types of archetypes. I already know which ones are mine, and I think, like you said, it allows us to understand the why of our behavior. Why we why why do I do this? And instead of you know, not everything has to be something that you have to overthink. You have to actually just understand yourself, and then of course do things differently. If it's not working do it differently Mm -hmm. so I really love that and I also love the affirmations that we gave for some of them and I just want to thank you for your time as well and I'm also reminding you guys that this is not financial advice (laughs) if you're seeking financial advice please speak to a uh, professional financial advisor Um, today we're just having this beautiful conversation around your relationship with money and I'm gonna post Farana's details in the um, description segments if you want to work with her in terms of the um, money archetypes you think you may have if you want to understand anything in terms of your relationship with money or even just in general because she is a psychologist and also a money coach success money coach what is it again <laughs> all, of all, of all of them all of them so <laughs> all the things that allow you to move forward so thank you again Farah and I really thank appreciate you, you being me. here today really lovely spending time with you thank you